I love cats. To be honest, who doesn't? I'm guessing you clicked on this video because you share my love of these feline friends, or at the very least like them. I'm sure there are some poor portrayers out there who are guilty of the heinous act of disliking cats, but they're obviously wrong, so let's just ignore them. I've always been a cat guy ever since I was a kid, so when I heard there was a game coming out about a cat in a sci-fi cyberpunk world basically mashing my two favourite things together, you can bet your arse that I was beyond excited for it. Enter Stray, a game that released in July of last year, where you play as a ginger tabby cat exploring a downtrodden underground world inhabited by weird and quirky robots. It's a short and sweet game coming in around 6 to 8 hours on an average per through. Most of your time will be spent jumping from platform to platform, ledge to ledge, with some high speed running thrown in followed by a few puzzles. You'd think for such a simple game it would go by fairly unnoticed, but this game ended up selling extremely well, receiving universal acclaim and winning multiple awards. So, was the hype justified? Is this game truly as amazing as everyone says it is? Okay, the answer is yes. But in this video, I'm going to show you exactly why that is, starting with the gameplay. So, what will you be doing in Stray's 6-8 hour playtime? Well, as I said, this game mainly consists of platforming and puzzles, both of which are fairly simple. This little fella can jump onto a feasible ledge or object by tapping X. You can also hold X to jump in quick succession which is really helpful for section of the game where you have to run. You won't have to worry about jumping to your death in this game, because you can't jump from one section to another unless prompted. It's limited but it makes sense, and it's probably the best approach they could have taken in order to accurately depict the cat's mobility. Thankfully the limited jumping is more than compensated with the environment which is anything but a nice voice break there. Throughout each area of the game there's plenty of objects for you to platform on, most of which are made obvious that you can jump on them, thus avoiding any needless confusion. As for the puzzles, they're mainly utilised to break up the pace of the game, stopping you every once in a while to get you thinking before you progress. None of the puzzles are insanely complicated, you're not going to be stumped on any of these, and if you are, perhaps you should try another system. The puzzles are fairly quick and expedient, even for people who aren't avid gamers, dodging any possible tedium and overly long stop gaps. This brings me to one of the many reasons that this game absolutely slaps, and that is the accessibility. Stray doesn't require you to master any tricks, or to be skilled at games in general, it's the type of game that can be played by anyone just to relax and soak in the atmosphere. Smart move on Blue 12 Studios part, as I'm sure there are plenty of cat owners who just wanted to play a cute game with a cat in it. Moving on, let's have a look at the levels you'll be playing in, and oh my god, they are flipping gorgeous. I wanted to bet that a big chunk of my playtime was spent gawking at the beautiful environments this game has. Easily one of the best looking games I've ever played. Straight is divided between narrow, linear levels and more open hub worlds, where you can go slightly off the beaten path. There are three hub areas in total, and they mainly serve as breaks in between the story and a safe way to convene with the robots to progress. There are three hub areas in total, and they mainly serve as breaks in between the narrative, and a safe way to convene with the robots to progress the story. In these areas you will have opportunity to stray from the main objective, no pun intended, and find collectibles as well as complete side missions. The collectibles include memories that can help your little buddy BD12 discover more about themselves and the world before, and badges, often the reward for completing the side tasks I mentioned. These side tasks involve helping some random homeless robot, or hobo robo as I like to call them, play some sick beats. And helping a blue collar robot find his damn keys, among other things. In my opinion, these hub areas were the highlight of the game for me. Not only did they look freaking stunning, I had a blast exploring and finding hidden areas and items, but that's not to say the rest of the game isn't as awesome. On occasion you'll come across enemy encounters. Oh yeah, something to be wary of if you love cats, there are times where the cat can get injured and hurt, which can be hard to watch. It's nothing graphic or brutal, but I thought I would mention it. All the more reason to evade the enemies I say. The first enemy type are the Zerks. Essentially, cute versions of the head crabs from Half-Life, but just as deadly. These mofos are responsible for the extinction of the human race, and the poor condition of the robots. Like the Half-Life head crabs, they will try and eat your flesh and mess you up real bad. Luckily, you can shake them off, but be warned, they always come in swarms though, so you better run for your freaking life. 
At some point in the game you do get a small weapon, an ultraviolet flashlight which can kill these flesh eating creatures, a fleshlight if you will. Don't- uh, <laughs> actually let's not go with that. Don't get used to it though, you lose it fairly quickly. Later on in the game when you reach the higher levels you will meet the second set of enemies, the sentinels. Deadly flying drones that will shoot you dead if you aren't careful. This is where the stealth comes in. You will in some parts of the game have to sneak past either these drones or the robots Metal Gear Solid style. This is done by hiding behind walls and waiting for an opening, or even taking direct advice from Solid Snake himself and hiding in boxes. Again, nothing too complex. Throughout this section I've commented many times that these various gameplay elements are fairly simple and not too complex. Don't get it twisted though, that's not a point against the game whatsoever. This is the type of game where you can relax and annoy robots too. It's the type of game where the gameplay takes a back seat to the world building, atmosphere, environments and levels as those are the areas of focus and where this game's strong points lie. Kind of like Half-Life which I mentioned earlier, I don't know why that keeps coming up but it's a good example, yeah. The gameplay is accessible and actually very awesome due to how accurate it is to real cats, with some levities taken to make the game more fun. Obviously this cat is a lot smarter and a lot more capable than cats in real life. To my knowledge though, this is the closest we've come to simulating how a cat moves. Oh, and before I move on, I forgot to mention this game has a dedicated meow button. Freaking adorable. Like the gameplay, the story is perfect. Okay, I apologise, that was clawful. Anyway, the story follows a stray tabby cat hanging out with his gang of mates. One day they decide to go on the move, and whilst doing that, well, this happens. Kitty falls god knows how far down and miraculously survives, probably costing one of their nine lives. After falling unconscious due to injury, they wake up shortly after exploring the bleak and empty cityscape before them, all while receiving signs from some unknown entity. Soon after, our little kitty finds himself ambushed by a horde of these flesh-eating creatures, leaving them no other choice but to bolt the heck out of there. Thankfully, they escape and eventually meet a little robot friend called BD12, who has no memory of who or what it is. The two of them venture onwards, coming across a slum area filled with quirky robots mimicking human behaviour. The guardian of the slums informs the pair about a group called the Outsiders, who are the only ones who have knowledge about the world outside the underground city. From here, the two of them together decide to meet these outsiders and find out who BD12 is, what happened to the humans, where did the Zerks come from, why the robots living underground, and hopefully a way back home. And that's the setup for Stray. A really intriguing narrative if you ask me. Not only did I want to keep exploring the dreary yet endearing world, but I was actually invested in the story, and I wanted answers to all those questions. Despite being on the shorter side, it successfully hooked you in throughout the entire duration, making this game a joy to experience the whole way through. This is greatly helped by the various characters you meet on your journey, whom despite speaking in bleeps and bloops, are extremely charming. A lot of people will describe this game as dystopian and bleak, heck I've done so in this video and rightfully so, however I don't want you to get the wrong impression. Yes, the world you explore in Stray is on the darker side, but the overall theme and tone is overwhelmingly hopeful and optimistic. Heck, the reason you team up with the outsiders is because you are solid proof that the outside might be safe to explore and travel in, so the robots don't have to be stuck underground in eternal darkness anymore. Voice break 2. God damn it! In summary, Stray is a fantastic game, and an overall breathtaking experience. I know this phrase gets overused, but Stray really is an emotional roller coaster. In its brief length, it managed to make me laugh, smile, panic, and even tear up, especially at the ending. In my eyes, this was easily the best game of 2022. I've played this game multiple times, gotten all the achievements, and I still see myself replaying it in the future. If you haven't played Stray, you're severely missing out. Doubly so if you're a fellow cat enthusiast. That concludes my thoughts on Stray. 
But what do you guys think? Did you enjoy it as much as I did? Leave a comment below. Like if you liked, dislike if you disliked, consider subbing for more quality content, and I'll see you guys next time. Have some more chicken. Have some more pie. Have some more chicken. Have some more pie. Have some more chicken. Have some more pie. It doesn't matter if it's boiled or fried. Have some more chicken. Have some more pie. Have some more chicken. Have some more pie. Have some more chicken. Have some more pie. It doesn't matter if it's boiled or fried.